The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Firstly, what is stoichiometry? As it says here, stoichiometry is the study of various quantities of materials consumed and produced in chemical reactions. Great. Now we're ready for our first slide. Atomic mass unit, molecular weight, and formula weight. Atomic mass unit. What is, a, what is an atomic mass unit? It's exactly 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Furthermore, atomic mass unit is also known as a Dalton. Now, when working with individual atoms, it can be cumbersome to work in grams, thus atomic mass units are employed. And just to give you a better understanding here, a one atomic mass unit, as it says here, right, is equal to 1.660539 times 10 to the power of negative 24 grams. Now, the mass of one carbon-12 atom is equivalent to 12 atomic mass units. Great. Now, moving on to molecular weight, also known as, you may see it written as molecular mass, is the sum of the atomic mass of all the atoms in a molecule. Simply put, they're just asking you for the mass of the molecule. Great. Now, before we move on to our next definition here, when, some, when working with various substances, you may not always have a molecule. What I mean by that is sometimes you may be asked to find the weight of a ionic compound. And just to give you an example of an ionic compound, we have sodium chloride. Thus, when working with ionic compounds, as opposed to the molecular weight, you're going to be asked for the formula weight. Also, no, you may also see it written as formula mass. And that is the sum of the atomic mass of all the atoms of any molecular or ionic compound. Wonderful. Now, to find either the molecular weight or the formula weight here, right, you would employ the same strategy. And let's take a look at that now on our next slide. Great. Here we are. Let me just get my pointer here. Example molecular weight. Uh, what is the molecular weight of D glucose? And the molecular formula here is given to us as C6H12O6. In order for us to find the molecular weight, right? In order for us to find the molecular weight, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take the atomic mass of the individual atoms and their total and their sum is going to give us the molecular weight. Thus, let's begin by writing down our individual atoms. Beginning here with carbon, we know that we have 6 carbon. For hydrogen, we have 12 hydrogens. We have, for oxygen, we have, oh, just erase that there. We're going to have 6 oxygens. Wonderful. And where can we find the atomic mass of various atoms? Well, that's going to be found on the periodic table. And let's take a look at that now. When you're writing your test, you're typically going to be given a periodic table that's very similar to this one, very bare, just given your basic information. However, it is very, very useful. Thus, make sure that you are comfortable with the with your periodic table. That way, when it, is, when it does come to test day, that you can extract the information that you need quickly and concisely. Now, what I mean by that is just take the time to build familiarity. Wonderful. Now, what is it that we're looking for? We need the atomic mass of carbon, right? We need the atomic mass of oxygen, and we need the atomic mass of hydrogen. And the atomic mass is just the number given below here. And what we'll do is just for simplicity, we'll round to one decimal place for oxygen. It's going to be 16.0, 12.0 for carbon, and 1.0 for hydrogen. Great. Coming back to our slide here, thus, we said that that was going to be 12.0 atomic mass units, right? And that's going to give us a value of 72 atomic mass units. Now, we said it was going to be one atomic mass unit for hydrogen. Thus, that's going to give us 12 atomic mass units, right? And for, ox for oxygen here, it's going to be 16 atomic mass units. 
right? And that's going to give us a value of 96 atomic mass units. Wonderful. And once we go ahead and we equate this, again, it is for glucose that we need the molecular weight. That is just going to be 180 atomic mass units. And there we are. That is how you would get the the molecular weight. Furthermore, if this was if this was a ionic compound, you would employ the same strategy. You would just take, for example, say we had sodium chloride, you would just find the the atomic mass of the sodium and then just the atomic mass for a chloride. Wonderful. Let's now move, proceed to our next slide. What are we taking a look at now? Ah, great. Since this is stoichiometry, a few definitions that we do need to become comfortable with is the mole, molar mass, and the Avogadro's number. Beginning here with the mole. A mole is a SI unit of measure which tells us how much of a quantity is present. And what quantity is that? That's the amount of molecules in grams, right? And now if we look here at our first point, a mole of a substance contains an amount of molecules which is equal to the same number of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon. And how many molecules are in 12 grams of carbon-12? It's this amount right here, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. And that number there, that is the Avogadro's number. Wonderful. Now, one other term that we should also be very comfortable with is the molar mass. And as it says here, the molar mass is the mass of a mole of a substance in grams, which is numerically equal to the molecular or formula mass in atomic mass units. So thus, if we take a look down here at our compounds, whether it's sodium chloride, water, or sulfuric acid, as we see here, we see that their, their, formula, their molecular or formula masses are equivalent to their respective molar masses. And what is the molar mass once again? This mass right here is the mass of a mole, and the mole contains this amount of molecules, right? Or particles, we can say. Great. Now that we're comfortable with our definitions, let's continue on with our next slide.